Revenue Chat Episode 102. The Dream Business Community wants to help you with your career and business. Are you ready for accelerated success? Check it out. The Dream Business Community at Tony, D-U-R-S-O dot com slash community. Get the Revenue Chat mobile app for your Android or iPhone. It's free. Download from onelink.to slash revchat. That's O-N-E-L-I-N-K dot T-O slash R-E-V-C-H-A-T. The co-founder and president of Performance Support Systems, Meredith Bell is the expert in helping companies develop the people side of their business. An entrepreneur since 1982, one of her strengths is building strong relationships as she understands what's required to build the loyalty and commitment that lead to repeat business and referrals. Meredith shows us how to create connections that make you unforgettable. Next on Revenue Chat. Hello again and welcome to this episode of Revenue Chat. I'm your host, Tony D'Urso. In our last episode 101, Priest Willis gave such a great interview on how to hack your job to build a life. Very clever and easy to replicate for anyone that wants more out of their life or career. The simple steps are here and they work. On this episode, we have Meredith Bell, the president and co-founder of Performance Support Systems, a global software company in Virginia. After many years as a business consultant, focusing on developing leaders and building strong teams... Meredith worked to establish the programs needed to create the long-term impact she wanted for her clients. Her team created a virtual coaching system, ProStar Coach, which incorporates everything they learned about how to master a skill or change a behavior pattern. Her website is strongforperformance.com. All right, Revenue Crew, let's rev it up. Get ready for Meredith to show us how to create connections that make you unforgettable. Here we go. Hello, Meredith. How are you? I am great, Tony. Thank you so much for inviting me to be on your show. Oh, my pleasure. You know, it's so wonderful to finally have you on the show. It seems like it's been so long, and I want to thank you for taking the time to hang out with us on Revenue Chat. Well, I'm excited to share some ideas today that I think will be really useful for your listeners. Yes, I'm really interested, too, on creating connections that make you unforgettable. But first, Meredith, I mentioned a little bit about you, and perhaps you'd like to fill us in a little bit and tell us how you became an expert in your field. I started out, even as a child, wanting to be a teacher. So that drove me for my entire life until I actually got into it and then um, moved into administration and realized I was not cut out for politics or bureaucracy. So I jumped out of the educational system in 1982. And so for the last 30-some years, I've been an entrepreneur. And honestly, Tony, I learned a lot by falling down and scraping my knees and getting back up and trying again. But I've always had this interest in my own self-development and helping others become strong and effective communicators in their own right, and especially working with leaders, whether it's executives or business owners. And so getting in the trenches, working with folks like that, having my own company with employees of my own and learning how to be a leader. The answer to your question is really a combination of experience on the job and studying a lot and then working with clients to help them find the best way to serve others. Very, very cool. And by the way, I also am a PhD in the School of Hard Knocks as you. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) I I totally understand that one. Well, very cool. Well, let's kind of jump into this. I'm really interested in this topic. And the first thing I like to know is, well, we're going to, okay, so let's go at the beginning. We're going to reach out to new connections. Well, is there a kind of thinking or mindset that you think or say is required before you even start reaching out? 
I think so, because a lot of people, uh, and I know I used to be this way at times, I'd be concerned and self-conscious about how I would come across, when was the right time to talk about my products, and being concerned about being salesy. So there is a mindset that we need to have. And I'll tell you, it's revolutionary in terms of, not in terms of what I'm going to share necessarily, but in terms of what it does to a person's mind when they adopt this kind of mindset. So here are some of the elements of it. For one, it's having a genuine curiosity about people, and in particular, the person you're speaking with at that moment. And having this attitude and approach of how can I be of service to this person? Because when you're really focused on how you can help someone else and what you can learn about them, you don't focus on your own self-consciousness. That kind of melts away and you're just fully present with this other person. And you don't have expectations for a certain outcome. And for me, one of the biggest elements of mindset has been thinking about it as being fun and enjoyable. So I don't take it too seriously because I tend to be a serious person. And if I'm focusing on them and what they might need as a result of learning by listening and asking questions, then I'm calmer, I'm more relaxed, and I'm able to listen better. Because when we're feeling anxious and stressed, we simply cannot be as fully present with that other person because we're preoccupied with ourselves. So focusing on that is huge. And there's actually another point that has been big for me over the last few years, and that is to approach this as a scientist would when conducting an experiment in that it's neutral. Whatever data comes out of the conversation, it's just data and I can learn from it. I don't have to tie my self-worth or my confidence to somebody telling me no or you know, deciding they don't want to have another conversation or whatever the outcome might be. I simply say, okay, that's interesting. And so what might I do differently next time that would help me get a better result? And I think that is so important, just the way we think about and approach a situation. That's very interesting. So there's someone here, I'm at a convention, a conference, I'm at the supermarket, whatever, and there's someone I want to meet, just so I summarize a little bit. There's no preconceived, oh, I want to sell this person, I want to do XXX in relationship, whatever, with this person or turn it into something just see what happens and just go in, give it my best sort of thing as far as my mindset and my thinking about it? Well, I think that is important. I mean, you can have a a specific goal, but it isn't to make a sale for an initial conversation. It's to learn about that other person. What's important to them? What needs do they have? I want to share a quote with you that has been profound in impacting my own mindset and my thinking before I enter a conversation. I learned it from a book called The Prosperous Coach, and it's this. Before conversation to ask yourself, how can I serve this person so powerfully that they never forget our conversation for the rest of their life. I like that. Very good. That's a good point. Good quote. Isn't Thank that you. awesome? I'm yes. telling you, if you have that, you see, there's no way that you can be focused on yourself because to serve someone profoundly does not mean that you're giving them advice, you're telling them what to do, you're talking about yourself or your products. You are intensely interested in learning about them. And I've actually had people, they won't say, I'll never forget this conversation, but they will say things like, I've never heard anyone ask me questions quite like that before. And it isn't that I have some formula or some magic thing. It's that I just, sometimes I'll even close my eyes to block out the potential for any other distraction. Of course, this is when I'm talking to them on the phone, not in person. They'd think I'm pretty weird. (laughs) I close my eyes during that. But if I'm with them face to face, it's looking them in the eyes and really letting them know that I'm with you. But to ask questions that perhaps no one else has taken the time to ask 
is huge. And that's when, without necessarily meaning to, you make a really positive impression. Because Tony, guess what? Most people are waiting for their next turn to talk. They're not really listening closely. And so when you're able to do that, you are memorable. You stand out from everyone else that they've spoken to. Good. I like that, Meredith. Thank you. All right. Very cool. Moving forward here, we've got the mindset in reaching out. Okay, let's uh, pick a scenario here. There's a group of people. We walk up to them. Some people, you know, pick the first person that's closest to them. Some people may pick whoever's looking at them to talk to. You know, some people just go in and just start talking to the whole group. How would you say in terms of, well, who do I want to add to my network? Who do I want to approach? And how would I approach them? What would you say on that, please? Well, if you're talking about an in-person networking event, I think it's good to just kind of slow down and take a moment to look around the room. Sometimes it's good to approach someone who's, who's by themselves and looking uncomfortable. Other times you may have a more strategic aim where you know before going to the event who's going to be there. And so you're intentional about going up and meeting the people you've identified and simply introducing yourself, telling your name and asking a question that, you know, gets them engaged. And that, of course, can be a range of things depending on what the event itself is. What caused you to to come to this event, you know, asking about what they do either in their personal lives or, or at work. If you're talking about, though, just kind of thinking on your own, who do you want to add to your network and what's the best way to approach them, one of the things to do is take a step back and ask, who is it I really need to connect with that is either going to be a positive influencer for me with others or may become a potential client or customer themselves or could be an ally with me in some way. So thinking about, you know, what's the universe of people? Who are those individuals and why adding them to your network would be important? And then thinking of, okay, where do I need to go to get to where they hang out. And of course, on the web, it might be one of the social media platforms, or it could be, you know, a specific group or an association. There's any number of ways. But I think sometimes we are trying to to be so busy and active that we get scattered and try to do too many things in a live networking event that could look like trying to go from group to group to group and never having a meaningful conversation with anyone. Whereas it might be better to zero in on just one or two conversations because you never know who somebody else might know, even if they're not a solid, you know, prospect for your own business, it may be that they could introduce you to someone else. So it pays to just experiment and meet different people and see where it leads. Very cool. Totally got you on that. And yeah, and sometimes I find, you know, for me, the more meaningful conversations, regardless of the person becomes a sale, a prospect or whatever, the more meaningful conversations for me really stand out and that helps make that meeting unforgettable and lasting. I have people that I met at a convention, trade show, 20 years ago, it seems. Maybe it wasn't 20 years ago. And periodically, I get an email from some of these people because they still remember me. It's so cool. (laughs) It is cool. And that tells me that you said or did something or interacted with them in some way that caused them to feel valued and important. And, you know, when you think about it, Every human being has that need. No matter how healthy our you know, self-esteem is, it's important that we feel understood and appreciated by other people. So you clearly did that for them. Well, thank you. And you know, I've been through some of the overviews and programs on your site, strongforperformance.com. And I was very, very intrigued by your style, your focus, how you do it. And it's such an amazing program. And you have some just little snippets of here's how it works. And and I happen to notice 
that one of your examples, and this isn't everything you do, but it was an example, was about listening and how to listen and the focus and the action on listening. And I was so impressed with that. And I thought, wow, you go down to such a foundation, such a bottom foundation, I guess. You go to such a basic, basic level on how to help people with their performance that I was so impressed. And I wanted to ask you in terms of one of the examples that you had there on listening, what can someone do with using that as a tool? Let's call it a tool, listening. What can he do to stand out and be memorable with new connections or those already in his network? I love talking about listening because it's something that most people think they're good at. But in reality, if you observe how most people are at listening, They really aren't. And so therefore, to me, it's like the golden skill that if you can learn to do it well, it's amazing how many friends you can make and how many people will want to interact with you. And what it really consists of is not being, you know, totally quiet necessarily, but a willingness to focus. If you think of a spotlight, it's a willingness to shine that spotlight on the other person and to pay attention to what they're saying so that you can ask follow-up questions that make sense and help them to think through things even more. It's just profound. The Dream Business community wants to help you with your career and business. As you know, jobs can be fickle. Here today, gone tomorrow. And owning a business has its own frailties. Bloomberg says 8 out of 10 entrepreneurs fail in the first 18 months. A Harvard study says 3 out of every 4 venture-backed firms fail. And there's other sources with shocking figures of their own, which all point to one very conclusive point. These are scary times we live in. Let's help you in the dream business community. Yes, you. Let's try to give you the information you need now to boost your career or business. And I'll be there every step of the way, helping you along with other experts in many industries. Are you ready for accelerated success? Check it out. The dream business community at TonyDurso.com slash community. That's TonyDurso.com slash community. Do you like the awesome interviews on Revenue Chat? Please help others discover these interviews on iTunes by giving a kind review if you like them. Go to TonyDurso.com slash iTunes and give a few sentences about what you liked. Let me know and I'll send you something to show my appreciation. That's TonyDurso.com slash iTunes. And thanks so much. And we're back with Meredith Bell talking about how to create connections that make you unforgettable. I can give you just today, I had an initial call with these two gals that are business partners and they jumped in saying, oh, tell us about your Strong for Performance program. We find it intriguing and we'd really like to know more about it. Well, you know, if I were in a gosh, I I got this opportunity. I got to jump on it. I need to get in there and tell them everything I can. If that were my approach, I, I could have blown it. But instead I said, you know, I would love to tell you about it. First, I'd like to ask you a few questions if that's okay. So I've got some context for talking with you about it. So we were on the phone for an hour and a half and, or actually it was a Skype call. And I just kept asking more questions as they told me things about their work and things they were doing with their clients. I gave them some suggestions about things they might do in their marketing and and with the book one of them had published. So I'm listening closely, but I'm not just being silent. All right. So that's an important thing. You ask questions initially that make it safe and comfortable for people to open up so they don't feel pressure because you want to build trust, rapport, and the way that you do that to me is to listen in a powerful way that includes asking questions, then paying attention to what they're saying, 
and then asking more questions or contributing thoughts, ideas that caused them to think even more. And it was interesting, Tony, because this was a video call and I could watch them taking notes as I was saying things. And it was only because I was causing them to think about things related to their business that they hadn't necessarily thought about before. So I ended up spending a very few minutes towards the end really talking about what our product can do, but we ended up setting an appointment for me to do an online demo with them where I'll be able to show them more. But they went away with pages of notes and very excited about this conversation because of how things evolved and because I didn't want to jump right in and start talking about our product out of context with what they're already doing. That is very cool, Meredith. And to the revenue crew out there, May I say that if you go to Strong for Performance, and as I said, that's for F O R, Strong for Performance.com, and right there on the home page are three orange buttons executive overview, an introduction, and a brief tour. These videos are short, 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 but let me tell you if you go through it, you'll learn something immediately about listening and about working with others. And I'm not going to steal anyone's thunder. These are just a minute or two or a couple minutes each. And it goes into, and that's why I was asking her about listening because she happened to use that as, Meredith happened to use this as an example in uh, one of these little uh, tutorial, short little uh, explanation videos. Very cool stuff. Very cool. You guys got to check it out. And may I say, the power of listening is so amazing. But as is explained on this homepage and on some of these tutorials, just hearing something and knowing something doesn't mean you're an expert at it. Okay, yeah, 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 I know how to listen. Okay, fine. That doesn't mean you're an expert at it. She, Meredith, breaks it down into three parts, and one of which is actually doing that little training and work on what you've just learned and then going back and getting feedback and follow-up. So there's a way and a method to it. It's not just, oh yeah, I know how to listen. You'd be surprised. And I'm sorry, Meredith, uh, for taking the time on this, but I was just really, really impressed by how you broke this down. Oh, thank you, Tony. I appreciate that. You know, there really are steps, so it doesn't have to be mysterious for anyone. And I'm big on not, you know, getting bogged down into too many steps, but a lot of it really is the approach, the mindset that you bring to it. And that's why I'm glad you asked me about that right from the get-go, because that has everything to do with what people sense about you and their willingness to open up. It's just amazing. To me, it's like, it's just magical. And I've seen it happen again and again and again over the years. We've got people who've done business with us for over 20 years. You know, that to me says something about our desire to build lasting relationships, not, you know, have a quick transaction. That's very cool, Meredith. Now, why would you say it's better to focus on what you can give or contribute to someone? And how is that different from what most people do? Well, for one thing, you'll stand out because most people, there's a wonderful book called Give and Take by Adam Grant, and he actually describes three kinds of people, givers, takers, and matchers. And of course, takers are out for what they can get from a specific situation without regard to what you might possibly get. But more people probably fall into this matcher which simply means if you do this for me, I'll match it and do that for you. So it's a, a given tit for tat kind of thing. Whereas giving, you're not keeping score. You are simply kind of letting go of the outcome and trusting that things work out because they really do. If you decide to just give, you'll stand out from what most people do and they'll remember you as someone who genuinely cared about what was important to them and not just promoting yourself or your products and services. I'm thinking about this one situation. And again, this happened over a period of time. I don't know if you're familiar with Bill Glazer. He was the president of GKIC or Glazer Kennedy Insider Circle for a number of years. And I went to their conferences and I would make a point of going up to him and 
just giving him a compliment about something that I genuinely appreciated about the conference, because I know how people grumble and complain because I've put on conferences myself. And I thought I just wanted to look for ways of pointing out what I was personally enjoying. And, you know, one of the times I went up to him, he said, you know, you're always so positive. Could you call me every day and give me some encouragement? (laughs) Now, this is a guy who has done extremely well for himself in business. And one time after one of the conferences that was, I thought, extraordinary, I wrote him a handwritten note that, and I listed out all the things that I had gotten from it. And the next month in their newsletter, he devoted a whole page to displaying this card that I had written to him. I was dumbfounded, but That's the point I'm talking about. I had no strings attached to sending him that card. It was a genuine expression of appreciation. And by the way, if somebody wants to stand out these days, taking the time to find out somebody's snail mail address and sending a handwritten note or something else, that alone will stand out because most people go with texting now or emails and they don't take the time to send something that somebody can open up and read. And it just makes a huge difference. So looking for ways that you can contribute to someone else does two things. It, of course, brings joy to them, but you would be amazed if you do this as a regular practice about how good you feel to give to someone else rather than to get back, whether it's sending a book that someone you know, might enjoy. When I'm a guest on shows like yours, I will think about what can I send as a way to say thank you to the host because I genuinely appreciate them having me on as a guest. And just saying thank you anymore seems like it's, you know, a real plus and sets people apart. But I just think there are so many benefits to kind of making your attention on how can I make a contribution rather than what can I get from this. Very cool, Meredith. And I totally love some of those examples of what we can do. And yes, snail mail, I think, is much more rarely used. I don't know if I said that well or not grammatically, but it's less and less used. In fact, the Christmas cards are less and less, even though the electronic ones are more and more. (laughs) So I think a snail mail can really be much more impressive because it's in less use as far as a nice thank you and so forth. Well, let me just tell you real quick one other example uh, that ties in with one of my favorite books now. It's called Giftology by a guy named John Rulin, R-U-H-L-I-N. And he would be a great guest on your show, by the way, because of all the wonderful things he says. But I heard him on a podcast with Lewis Howes, and I loved it, and I promoted it on my various social media accounts uh, because I just loved his message. And I bought his book. I wrote a really um, extensive review on Amazon and I forwarded it to John and I said, you know, I loved your book and I just wanted you to know, here's what I wrote about it. You can feel free to use this any way you want. And he wrote back just, you know, very appreciative. And I said, are you interested in being on other podcasts? Because I could introduce you to some folks. And he said, oh, yeah. So he's, I've probably introduced him to three or four other podcast hosts just because I enjoy connecting people where he can get his message out. It's a really important book on how to express appreciation. So he sent me a set of engraved Cutco knives as a thank you. Wow. And what's cool about that gift, and it he reinforces this in his book about the kind of gift, it's something I see all the time when I'm in my kitchen cooking, you know, and I'm cutting. So I think of John a lot. And one of his suggestions is give things that people can keep and use as opposed to food that they would consume and then it's gone. So the idea of looking out for ways to either connect people or contribute and make their lives better in some way without any expectation of something in return. Because I didn't know John. It was just one of those things where I heard something I thought was wonderful and wanted to get it out to a broader audience. Very cool, Meredith. And I've seen him here and there on podcasts, videos, and so forth. And yes, I would love to interview him. It would be awesome if you made an introduction. Thank you for offering on that. I'll be happy to do it. 
Great, great examples of how you and others are in service to their connections. And very cool. Meredith, let's talk about purpose and vision. I'd like to know what motivates and drives you. Well, that's such an important question. What really drives me is seeing the impact that our programs can have on the lives of others. So someone who is a leader who learns how to be a better listener, who learns how to engage in dialogue where they are open to hearing others' opinions and then being willing to change their mind or, you know, have a more even exchange or learn how to give both positive and constructive feedback. When I see them learning how to do these skills better and the impact that it has on the people who are, you know, on their team or in their company, and even stories I've heard about the impact it has on their families, that is tied into my purpose because I want to see people be ever able to communicate better, to get along, to work through issues in a positive way that leads to stronger, deeper, better relationships. That's really what I'm all about is how to have good relationships so that our lives have meaning. We live with joy and happiness and we don't die with regrets. I love that. Very cool. I'm with you on that. I really like to also make a difference with the connections that I have, and you've just got it down. So very, very cool. Thank you for all that, Meredith. All right. And now we are close to wrapping up. Is there anything else you'd like our audience to know about, please? I think just to keep your radar up for opportunities where you can show someone else that you care, that they're important, that they matter. Because we all have these moments every day where we're with a family member and we could compliment them on something that we appreciate that they did. But oftentimes we withhold it for some reason. We might think that something, our egos get in the way or we're afraid that, you know, if we give this, then somehow it takes away from us. So I would just say, if we can set our egos aside and focus on how we can brighten another person's day in the smallest of ways, then we'll end up, uh, as John Wooden used to say, making your day a masterpiece you know, one day at a time. It happens in small ways, not necessarily huge, splashy ways, because it really comes down to our relationships with individuals. I love it. Very cool. Awesome. Well, thank you very, very much, Meredith. Again, very much an honor to have you on the show. I love it. I learned some good things. It was great. Oh, thank you, Tony. It was a pleasure to be with you, and I will be putting you in touch with John soon. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. And once again, to our revenue crew, this is Meredith Bell, and she just taught us a number of steps on creating connections that make you unforgettable. And her website is Strong4, that's F-O-R, Strong4Performance.com. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, and stay tuned to our next show on Revenue Chat. Our next episode is 103 with Yolanda Tucker, an expert contract consultant. She has nearly two decades of experience negotiating and administering complicated contracts from minorities and women to corporate giants and government contracts. She has been there at all levels, assisting her clients to successfully navigate through sometimes dangerous waters. Yolanda tells us the three must-dos before signing a contract on the next episode of Revenue Chat. All right. Thanks again, everyone. And until next time, remember, you can make life better for yourself and everyone. Choose wisely.